Chris Cuomo is praising Joe Rogan and blasting his former network over its COVID coverage. In the podcast with Patrick Bet David, the former CNN anchor and brother of former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo shared that he's now taking the same drug he used to make fun of. That's right. Let's watch. I'll tell you something else that's going to get you a, uh, a lot of hits. I am taking a, um, what do they call it? Like a, a regular dose, you know, whatever. They, they're trying to build up of ivermectin. Mm. Ivermectin was a boogeyman mm -hmm. early on in COVID. Mm -hmm. You couldn't talk about it. That was wrong. We were given bad information about ivermectin. The real question is why? Everyone's going to say. What exactly was the bad information? I want you to pay close attention to the way this is discussed. And listen to the words used, what's said and what's not said. What exactly was the bad information? And also, why is he using ivermectin? Notice also that he doesn't need to tell you why he's using ivermectin. The audience that this appeals to, they don't care. The idea of Chris Cuomo, especially after he was mocking it before. And trust me, I also called out CNN. See, that's that's when, what, what it is to not be in a tribe. I called out CNN for their ridiculous horse pace comments and the mockery and all of the nonsense, right? Well, at the same point, I also recognized and called out people who were acting like ivermectin was some miracle drug or some you know something that the the, the 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 drug companies don't want you to know because this is a cheaper thing right i'm not trying to call out the left or the right i'm just trying to call out nonsense wherever it's coming from right so he was making fun of it i called him out for making fun of it and now he's gonna go and say oh i'm taking ivermectin again no need to explain why who told him to take it why is this a good thing? Like, no details at all. Just simply throwing it out. Just connection of him taking it. That's, oh yeah, see, we were right all along. That's all he's got to say. Right? But why won't he give us details? Why does the PEBD podcast not care about the details of why he's using this? Who told him to use it? And what the wrong information? Why don't they care? Aren't they like the ones that want to dig in and like, oh, you don't know about this stuff. But on this... Just him saying that, that's all they care about. Yes, yes, we were right. Okay, continue. Say, Joe Rogan was right. No, Joe Rogan was saying, yeah, he was right. But that's that's not what... Notice he... So now he says Joe Rogan was right. Then he retracts and says, no, he wasn't. Then he's like, no, he was right. Like, what? Is this a guy that's just coming clean and telling the truth? Or is this a guy that's struggling for relevance as an independent guy? And... This is like sex and violence for movies, right? You're not very creative. You don't have a good movie plot. You're not a good writer. Uh, easy way out is just sex and violence. That always sells, right? So if you're in media, pander to the right. Especially if you were a major icon on the left. Oh my goodness. They're going to make you a hero. You're going to get invited on all kinds of podcasts, right? You're going to get so much coverage. And then if you keep leaning into stuff that they're saying, narratives, they, they, you're going to get so boosted and amplified. But if you try on your own to do this middle of the ground, you know, liberal stuff that you've been doing, eh, that's, that's, that's tough. That's tough work. That, that ain't easy, right? Even... If you're Chris Cuomo, former CNN guy, even for him, right? Because he's got a boost, right? He's got a boost with name recognition. But even with him, the 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 route that he's been taking so far, right? It's yeah, it's go. I'm not saying it can't work, but it's gonna be tough. Doing this, oh, this is easy. Matters. What matters is the entire clinical community knew that ivermectin couldn't hurt you. They knew it, Patrick. I know they knew it. How do I know? Because now I'm... Who says that ivermectin can't hurt you? Um, I have never heard of any drug that can't hurt you. Aspirin can hurt you. So the idea that ivermectin can't hurt you, that is false. And, of course, PBD fought, uh, podcast is not going to, like, question him on that. Like, what? You know what I mean? Like, they, they're not going to question him on any of this stuff. Him simply saying, oh, I take an ivermectin and they were saying wrong stuff. You guys were right. That's great. 
I'm doing nothing but talking to these clinicians who at the time were overwhelmed wow. by COVID and yeah. they weren't saying anything. He's doing nothing but talking to these clinicians. Who, which clinicians is he talking to? And what are they talking about? Without those details, that statement is irrelevant. I'm talking to all these clinicians. Without any context. Like, that's a useless statement. The only reason to say something like that without context is for, for you to appeal to authority, perhaps, to manipulate the people who are listening by connecting. So you're making this statement, you're putting all these things forward, and then you connect it with like, and I'm talking to clinicians, right? Without any context. Oh, wow. He's talking to clinicians. So it's not just some guy who's unqualified. He's talking to clinicians and then he, your brain puts things that he didn't actually say. You put in your mind, him saying what he's saying on this podcast to the clinicians, and they're like, yeah, you're right. But he doesn't say that. He doesn't give you any context at all. You have no idea what he's talking to them about. <laughs> it's so bad that he could literally be saying to them, should I be using ivermectin? And they could be saying, no, it's, it's dangerous or it won't work. Right? So the clinicians could literally be telling him that it's not a good idea. Because again, he hasn't told us what he's talking to them about. So it could be positive, negative. Apathetic. As a reminder, this is the way Chris Cuomo talked about ivermectin in 2020, as ex-fluencer Mays Moore pointed out. People who are getting, injecting drugs for animals and horse. False. It is not a drug for animals. It is a drug used for different purposes. Um, in some cases, it can be used for animals. In other cases, it can be for humans. It was used um, in humans for a very, very long time. And in the moment when this narrative was being pushed out by mainstream media and these independent guys as well on the left, I called it out. I made several videos calling it out, this horse pace narrative. It was deceptive. It was dishonest. Right? And, and it's just really frustrating that Chris Cuomo was pushing this dishonest misinformation about what was happening is now doing a 180 to push another flavor of misinformation yet again right he was wrong then and he's wrong now wow and people telling them to oh my god what person you know you talk about like you know cancel culture and who to shame ivermectin a dewormer really they are shaming themselves no one has to shame them they're shaming themselves no they need uh, to be shamed yeah. they need to be called out and shamed yeah. brother now joe rogan reacted to cuomo's shift in positions on his podcast let's take a listen Chris Cuomo just came out and said he's got a vaccine injury. That guy was pushing that on TV. Of course, he, the guy who's saying this also just so happens to have a vaccine injury, right? You ever notice how everyone who is kind of on this anti-vax or anti-vax friendly side, they all just so happen to have injuries or happen to know someone that has injuries, right? And everyone who's on the other side who's pro-vaccine, just so happens to not know anyone who's had injuries, right? And everything's fine. Everything's hunky dory. Everything's great. Um, something's not adding up. Forever. And he said he got it <clears throat> with his first dose, and then he got it again with his second dose. Rogan goes on to criticize the New York Times for their recent reporting on COVID vaccine-related injuries. This is in New York Times. Thousands believe COVID vaccines harm them. Is anyone listening? All vaccines have at least occasional side effects, but people who say they were injured by COVID vaccines believe their cases have been ignored. Well, they have. They have been ignored. I have friends that have, that have been ignored. Just think about how ridiculous it is that we're supposed to believe that Jimmy Dore had a vaccine injury, um, Chris Cuomo had a vaccine injury twice, he says. Joe Rogan, I don't know if he said he has one or, or he didn't, but he, he knows multiple people that had vaccine injuries. I mean, Joe Rogan is an ultra elite, very, very wealthy person. He is part of a very, very small percentage of the population. He's also a very busy man doing all these podcasts, he's running all these businesses. I don't think he has a ton of time to be just like hanging out. And, and I don't think he has a ton of friends that he's like hanging out with and things of that nature. Um. What are the odds that in that very, very tiny group, he just so happens to know multiple people that have vaccine injuries? I don't know, man. So it seems a, a dubious claim if you ask me. But how do I know? Maybe it's all the truth. Just seems very, very fishy. 
I, I can guarantee you, though, if you talk to Jimmy Dore, I bet you he knows people that have had vaccine injuries as well. Um, I would guess most people who are on the anti-vax side just so happen to have had injuries or know someone that has, has had injuries, right? So something's not adding up, right? Either the pro-vaccine people, you know, they're all lying that they don't know anyone that's had vaccine injuries, or the anti-vax people are lying and claiming that they have injuries or they know people have injuries, right? Can't, can't both be true. But if there's so many people with vaccine injuries that this very tiny fraction of the population, the, the amount of people that are in media, very small group, right? People that are on, on the higher levels of media, like, like um, Joe Rogan, even small group, that's a fraction of a fraction. The idea that in that tiny group, there's so many vaccine injuries that within that tiny group, you have these multiple instances. I don't know, man. Doesn't make any sense to me. Now, many on the right were furious with Cuomo's admitted reversal. Author and ex-influencer John Lefevre said, quote, It wasn't that Chris Cuomo was lied to about ivermectin or that Joe Rogan was lucky, as he now claims. Chris Cuomo was wrong. He was lazy. He didn't do his job. He was a useful idiot. Repeating propaganda, talking points, asking zero questions, and shaming. Ironically, that's exactly what he's doing now as he was doing before. Once again, he has just replaced one brand of misinformation for another brand. Anyone who did. Meanwhile, other CNN watchers are mad at Cuomo for different reasons. For example, one X user exchanged tweets with Cuomo writing, wow, just wow, it's always something with you. So glad CNN fired you. I watched you suffer with COVID and you have long COVID. Now, all of a sudden, now you have issues related to the vaccine. Come on, man, remember this. Let's just remember that Chris Cuomo was involved in several layers of misinformation and deception regarding COVID. Not only did he spread misinformation regarding ivermectin in terms of just trying to mock people who were talking about it, you know, even though many who were talking about deserve to be mocked, but not in the way that he was doing it, right? The mocking was not that the fact that this is horse paced, right? That was a narrative that was created within left wing media because it was perfect. I mean, the idea that people would be so dumb to be using horse paste, I mean, it, it just, it's, it's it's just perfect, right? In terms of their audience would love to see it, right? They love to, you know, each side loves to call out the other side, and that was a perfect thing because it made the the anti-vaxxers look just absolutely ridiculous. Now, many of these anti-vaxxers make themselves look absolutely ridiculous on their own, but this was just like adding whipped cream on it, right? Um, so he was presenting it as horse pace, not really acknowledging or talking about the successful use in humans for a very, very long time. He was additionally doing some fake theatrics regarding, I forgot exactly what he did, something about those videos where he was in his home and posting about, you know, his, his, um, how he was dealing with, with COVID. There was some deception there, some theater there where he had said one thing and then people found out that it actually wasn't true. Please comment below and let me know if you remember what it was. Maybe it was something about he was like on lockdown, but then somebody saw him out and about having a good time and he seemed fine. It was something like that. Then the other level was the whole scandal with his brother. And that, that was a whole, like, let's not even get into that. So this guy was involved in multiple layers of misinformation upon misinformation regarding COVID and vaccines. And now he is so determined to continue this track record that he has now gone to the side that are the absolute champions of COVID misinformation, right? So he's gone to the anti-vax side to now graduate to an even higher level of misinformation, to go out there and simply say, you know, vague things. I'm talking to these to the doctors and, and uh, yeah, I'm taking ivermectin. Why are you taking ivermectin? Oh, don't, don't ask me any questions. I won't tell any lies. Right. Chris Cuomo got COVID early on and shared the, the news of his illness on TV at CNN. The virus wants us to lay down. The virus wants us to take it. Other than the blessed few, the rest of us who get this are going to have an experience unlike anything else they've ever had. Yeah, this is tough. I remember specifically a bit that they did where they each got 
giant uh, Q-tips, and we're joking about the forget? size of the Q-tip and the mm -hmm. size of the brother's nose, and there's yeah, all yeah, of yeah. this pageantry around it. And so no wonder people are upset about a reversal of sorts coming so late in the game and after so many people were, I think, trying in good faith to raise these kinds of concerns. The Were they really? Certainly there were some people raising these concerns in good faith, but there were also many people that were making millions of dollars manipulating their audience, similar to the way Chris Como is doing with his whole uh, horse paste, right? Are you going to acknowledge those people who were not in good faith talking about, oh, they're trying to hide Negative. this vaccine uh, injury, they're trying to hide it. About the vaccine injuries, for one, has always been kind of absurd and outsized, believing that the cost, that the benefit outweighs the cost and making that case to the American public is one thing. Denying that there are costs at all was, I think, a tipping point of how intolerant. Denying that there was any cost at all. This is the very first time. This is years. So the, 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 this, the pandemic started in 20, 2020, I think it was, right? And the vaccine came out years ago and she is now sitting here for the first time i've never heard this i've I watched a lot of news about this right right wing left wing mainstream independent this is the first time i'm hearing someone talking about that there's no side effects first of all every drug has a side effect every vaccine has a side effect so can someone who's watching this video who is frustrated with me right now, please point me to who has ever said that the COVID vaccine doesn't have any side effects? Because Brianna is the first person I've ever heard making that claim. And I say this as a person who really likes her work. I generally agree with what she, what she puts out. Um, I think she does excellent work. But I don't know what she's talking about right now. The public media space was for any kind of discourse at the time. Moreover, I think for even casual observers, the insistence on characterizing um, hydrochloroquine or uh, ivermectin or whatever yeah. as uh, horse tranquilizers. Remember when the FDA came out and said, you, you know, you are not a horse and kind of was joking about this characterization of it as taking an animal drug. Again, these are drugs that are prescribed to humans and you can make a case that this is not indicated for this particular illness. These right. drugs are indicated for this particular illness without trying to cast people who are doing clinical trials to see if the drug has some efficacy and all these other kinds of things as insane and doing things, something that is outside of the scientific method and literally just you know eating dog food and acting crazy. Right, I agree. 100% what she said is correct. That's the part that she gets 100% correct. The ivermectin horse based narrative was absolutely ridiculous and it was clickbait. People were sitting there making all this money, right? Putting out a false narrative. Um, denying the realities of ivermectin, right? There's mul multiple realities of ivermectin. Safe drug has a long history of, of success in, in use in humans, right? Um, and the other part of it is not really effective for, you know, anything regarding COVID. That was the last thing that I ever heard, right? Those are the three truths, right? But rather than sh share these three truths and inform your audience, they choose the theater of, oh, horse pace, horse pace. Right. Um, now let me button this all up and nice with a, a nice bow. The other part of this that is so frustrating is that there definitely was a push to not talk too much about the injury. Um, this straw man argument that she puts out and he agrees with that people were saying that there were no injuries and, and this thing was like 100%. Like the idea that this was a perfect vaccine that didn't have any injuries, like that's ridiculous. No one was saying that, right? So you got to wonder, why can't they make their points without creating this false straw man, right? But here is what really was happening. What was really happening is that you had one side that was trying to make as much money as they can by playing on people's fears and talking about, you know, the vaccines don't work and, and COVID is not real and, you know, it's it's a bioweapon, whatever, 
whatever gets them the most clicks, right? The crazier it is, whatever it is is getting the most reaction, let's talk more about that. We don't care about the truth. We don't care about informing anyone. All we care about is how much money we can make. So one side is doing that. And then as a result, the other side is finding themselves in a reactionary position where they see this side as being dishonest and spreading a lot of misinformation. So therefore, anything that that side says is automatically dis dismissed as complete nonsense. And this is how a horse pace narrative can easily work in that kind of atmosphere. Because you know that they're saying a lot of ridiculous things. You know that a lot of ridiculous people that are saying stuff on that side. So then the minute they say stuff, they have no credibility. So it's kind of like, ah, uh, what are these guys talking about? So if they talk about ivermectin oh or some crazy thing if if the official narrative is not ivermectin then you're just like these guys are crazy and then someone starts saying horse pace you just jump on that you don't question it you don't look into it because again anything that you're saying you're 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 i mean for good reason you're skeptical right but just because you realize that they're saying nonsense doesn't mean you shut your brain off and don't listen to anything that they're saying right i listened to everything that they were saying and an overwhelming majority of it was nonsense, right? But I actually listened. So therefore, when they talk about ivermectin, I was able to get to the truth of ivermectin, right? How ineffective it was and the fact that it was good for humans or whatever, right? Because I've been listening to them. I can acknowledge that you see a lot of wacky things and at the same time, I can keep my brain running and actually think about things, right? But as a result of this contrarian sort of position that they found themselves in, just because of all of the dishonesty coming from one side, there were certain truths that did come from that side that were ignored. For example, lab leak. I don't. It's not official, you know, that it was a lab leak, but this was a definitely a credible narrative. It was a credible theory, right? But because of this contrarian thing, which is kind of like, okay, these guys are lying a lot, so they're talking about lab leak. Oh, lab leak! Like, oh, that's just those crazies, right? So you you miss out on things that 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 are potentially true or or at least are, are things that are, are worthy of discussion. And then when it comes to vaccines, everything is like anti-vax, 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 right? So realizing that the vaccines are effective, realizing the importance of vaccines, you know, they found themselves in this sort of a, we got to fight against misinformation. So talking about vaccine injuries became toxic because if you talk about vaccine injuries, right? Just simply even having that conversation, the side that is so monetizing this fair monitoring about vaccines, they will latch on to it. So imagine CNN doing a segment about have some people on like, oh, we had a vaccine injury or whatever. First of all, their audience is going to go after them because like, oh, you're doing right wing media stuff, right? And then second of all, the right wing media is going to latch on to it and say like, oh, CNN is now admitting the truth. And they're going to use that to add fuel to the, the fire of lies that they're pushing, right? So it put these guys in a weird situation. Now, somehow I was able to find a way to deal with this, but not being just like contrary and like anything the right saying must be wrong or whatever. But that is not what a lot of the mainstream media did or independent left did, right? So again, the general consensus was do not in any way amplify any talking about vaccine injuries um, because you knew it was going to be weaponized and monetized by the right to try to pretend like, oh, see, we told you, we told you, right? And this is a common tactic that's always used. So that means that, you know, news articles, uh, you know, YouTube channels, whatever it is, you know, there was kind of a, like, let's not talk about that stuff. And maybe that's why Brianna has this idea that people were saying there were no injuries, um, when that was not actually true. And there was acknowledgement that there were injuries. But what, what the official mainstream narrative was that it was very, very rare. And we have not seen anything to the contrary. Um, uh, the only exception to the rareness of vaccine injuries is uh, if you are an anti-vaxxer, then there's a high probability that you've had a vaccine injury or you know people who've had vaccine injuries. Now you go and explain why that might be the case, but for everybody else, extremely rare.
Right. This is the Debate Me Channel. Debate me in the comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that bell.